My name is Jeremy Walton and this is Dehancer 2.0 for Premiere Pro. Let's go! Not too long ago, I did a video on Dehancer and walked you through the steps to get you that film look using Premiere Pro. If you haven't already, go watch that video to get you prepared for some new features Dehancer added for version 2.0. I'm going to expand on the last video using the same clip, so you can consider this a continuation of that video. Link in description to get you started. The new features are tool profiles, film damage, and monitor. What are those? Let's get to it. We are in Premiere Pro, and here's a shot you've seen before in downtown LA. This is a great shot to use for an example. I love all the textures and contrast. Right here we have the red source setting. This clip is from my Red Komodo 6K RAW NMQ. As you can see right here, we have Dehancer Pro version 2.0 that's disabled. With one click, we definitely have a film look. Let me expand this and drop down to device. Just letting you know, I'm working with my 2023 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip. Let's go to input to review. For source, I have choose camera, and for camera, I have my red Komodo selected. Under the film tab, I'm still working with Fuji Chrome. You should be good so far. These are the basics that my other video covered, except when we get to film grain. Let's click on film grain, and here you have this profile in 35 millimeter. This drops down into a bunch of profiles ready to go from eight millimeter all the way to 65 millimeter. These are quick and simple, but I'm going to cover those in a later clip. At the top, we have custom, and if you select that, all the familiar settings open up so you can make all the small adjustments to create your film look. If you're just starting out, these profiles can get you up and running quickly or just save time depending on the project, but you can still tweak if you go into custom settings. So you can still start with a raw image like this and get a film look with great results using Dehancer. I want to get into film damage because I'm sure that's going to be popular. I previously used this clip of me riding a Triumph motorcycle and I think adding some film damage might complement this look. Dehancer makes this a very simple and easy process, which you'll see right now. Just to show you what I'm working with, under input you can see my camera is the GH5S. Under film is the Kodak Arrow Color. For film damage, just go to film damage. By the way, if something's not working, make sure it's enabled. Then you have another drop down menu. You can do custom or select a profile. Let's do that first and select 16 millimeter. After a quick render, you can have something like this that adds a little something extra to give you that film look. If you wanna get more custom, just select custom. Look at all these options from dust amount, hair, and scratches. You can even individually turn them off. You have a lot to play with. I'll leave that up to you. That's actually the fun part of using Dehancer. Download the free trial and enjoy. The other feature I wanna talk about is a monitor that holds false color and clipping. I'll cover both features. Let's drop down to monitor, and this is where you'll find false color and clipping. Let's start with false color, and all you have to do is select it. On the left, you have these colors corresponding to your exposure, but something looks a bit off. This is an issue I've come across, which I have emailed Dehancer about. Any news on that after I upload this video, I'll put down below in the comments. In this clip, I've changed the scale and position. Let me go back to the original. Now the color scale is properly displayed. If we look at the sky, it's yellow, so we're not clipping. And if we go to the shadows, maybe a couple spots were close to clipping. Now, if I want to adjust the image and zoom in, you can see I won't be able to read the false color chart. It's not an overlay. That makes things a bit more difficult. Hopefully that can be changed. If you want to use false color, you'll have to do your grade first, then reposition shots after. We also need to talk about clipping. I did show you we might be clipping in the shadows. Well, let's find out. And we're good. To show you what it would look like, let me drop the exposure a bit. Now you can see we've gone too far. When it comes to highlights, it's a tad different. This time I'm going to bump up the exposure. Now look at my image, not good at all. Even my waveform that I have on a separate monitor shows how bad this is. But if I have clipping turned on, nothing. I can even blow out the image, nothing. Slightly overexposed and still nothing. I tried different clips and couldn't get the same notification when clipping the shadows to show up when overexposing. Again, I'll have to wait to hear back from Dehancer. I'll let you know. To finish everything off, I want to end with a drone shot. This is one of my favorites and was taken with the DJI Mavic Pro. An older drone, but you can still get great shots. In my previous video, I showed you how to use the Rec. 709 to apply Dehancer if your camera isn't on the list. That's what I had to do with the Mavic Pro. 
Well, you do have other options like picking something similar, which is something you have to test out first, but it is an option. I did make a few adjustments here, not going to change that. I'm just going to choose camera, then we're going to pick the Mavic Pro 2 in D-Log. Have a look. I could probably make a few more tweaks, but let's go down to film grain. Here's the profiles we can pick from. Let me choose 16 millimeter with the ISO at 250, and now I'm going to zoom in on the image 100%. Hopefully you can see that grain. Let me toggle it on and off. Now for comparison, let me select 65 millimeter. You're going to get a much finer grain at 65 millimeter than you did at 16 millimeter. I just wanted to show you how easy to use the profile tool is when you want something done quickly with good results. I also threw on a bloom effect and added some film damage. So with the help of Dehancer, you can go from something like this to this. And with the new 2.0 update, it made it that much easier. Dehancer is a great tool if you're looking for a film look. I love seeing updates and ways to streamline my workflow. I'm sure I'll be making more videos with Dehancer in the future. Well, there you have it, Dehancer 2.0 for Premiere Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more on the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you have questions. Until next time, it's a wrap.